Okay, so in the first few videos, we created the structure of three things. We created the skeleton or structure for our user interface with some fake data. We created the structure of our application and API endpoints, which are currently mostly empty. And we also created the structure of our SQLite database that will be used to store all of our stock data. So now in this video, what we need to do is start taking all of these components and wire them all together so that we can have all of these interact with real user data and, and start uh, having the user interface actually populate our database, hit our endpoints, and so forth. So to do that, we're going to be using several features of Fast API and dive a little deeper into the actual framework now. So we're going to be using three main features. We're going to be using uh, Pedantic, so to define the structure of our HTTP requests. Secondly, we're going to be using dependency injection in order to make sure we have a database connection whenever an, an endpoint's logic executes. And third, we're going to use background tasks in order to actually fetch data in the background from Yahoo Finance. So let me show you how to do that. So let's revisit our create stock endpoint where you post to slash stock. It currently doesn't have any structured way of receiving data. And so what do we want? How do we want our user interface to look? We want the user to just enter a stock symbol. We want that stock symbol to get posted from the web to this endpoint and then we want it to insert into the database. So let's think about what this uh, post request requires. It just requires a stock symbol, which is a string. And so we can use Pedantic, which is a feature that's built in to Fast API to define the structure of our request. And so I'm gonna do that now. So what we can do here is at the top, we can do class um, stock request. It's gonna extend base model. And base model is part of Pedantic. So let me import that. So I'm gonna do from Pedantic, import base model. All right, and so basically the same way we're modeling our database tables, we're also modeling what our uh, API requests look like. So I'm gonna do class doc request extends base model, and then what kind of data do we need? We just need symbol, and that's of type string. And then we can go to our function signature for create stock, and we can say um, we're expecting a stock request. So I'm gonna do stock underscore request and say that's of type stock request, all right? And so let's test out this endpoint real quick and try posting like random data and see what happens. So I'm gonna start Insomnia here, which lets us uh, post uh, information or post data to an API. So I'm doing a post request. Uh, we're making it of type JSON. So we're expecting to post JSON and we're gonna to post to this endpoint. So I'm gonna click send, and you'll notice um, it says uh, information is missing. We don't actually have a stock request and we don't even have a body of the request. So now I'm gonna post a JSON of key value. And if I post that, you'll notice um, a field required and it needs a symbol. So if I do symbol and I do a string or a string like uh, apple, then the request succeeds. So you can see just by defining the stock request and extending base model, um, I can specify any information that needs to be in the JSON payload. And if I put that in the function signature here, we get automatic validation of every request. And we know once we get through um, to the main logic of our function, we know that all of our data has been validated and we've received all the types of data that we need. We don't have any empty values or uh, string values when we should have an integer, that sort of thing. So that's feature number one that we're using of FastAPI is the integration with Pedantic, which lets us specify uh, the structure of our requests and our responses, or however we want to use Pedantic. We can uh, check on the types of data coming in and out. So uh, the second feature we're going to be using is dependency injection. So the way we're going to use that is we're going to make sure um, before this function executes, we need to make sure we have a connection to the database because we're gonna need a connection to the database in order to insert a stock record. Uh, so to use that, uh, we're going to um, import depends. So fast API, we're importing fast API request and we're gonna import depends, All right? And so at the top of this application, um, we're going to define a function called get DB and this is gonna get a database session. So to do that, I'm gonna do a try catch, and this is directly from the documentation for Fast API. Um, we're gonna do a try and a finally. And inside of the try, we're gonna do db equals session local. So we're gonna create a database session and we're gonna do yield db. And then also in the finally, we're going to close 
the connection. So this is all we need to make sure we get a database section, uh, session. So this function gets a database session for us. So now that we have this function that gets us a database session, we want to make sure any of our endpoints that use the database um, get a reference to this database session uh, before they execute. So what I'll do here is add a, a dependency here. And the way you do that with fast API is you do DB. So we need we're, we were going to have a local variable called db, and it's going to be of type session. And we're going to say session equals depends get db. And so what that means is the get db function executes, and um, this function depends on getting this database connection. And after this executes, we'll have a, a db reference, and it'll be of type session. And so we can start using db inside of this endpoint. So now that we know we'll have a database session, let's actually use it. We've defined a SQL Alchemy model for stock. So I'm going to import that. So I'll do from models import stock. And that's the stock model that we defined earlier. And now we can actually use SQL Alchemy models. So I'm going to do stock equals stock. So I'll instantiate that model. And we'll say stock.symbol. So we'll set the symbol. And you'll remember this is what our stock model looks like. So we're going to set the symbol for in this object equal to the symbol that comes in from the stock request, which is right here. So stock request that symbol. So we know we have a symbol from our database model, and we know our request has a symbol because it's already been validated. And so we can set that. And then now all we have to do is use our database session to add this object to our session and commit it to the database. So I'm going to do db.add stock. And then I'll do db.commit. All right. And so now I'm going to post this symbol. And so I'm going to post Microsoft. And if I post it, it still says stock created. So did that work? Let's go to SQLite real quick. And I'm going to do select start from stocks. And you'll notice that Microsoft is now in our database. So our object relational mapper is working. We're using a dependency of getting a database connection. And we're injecting that into this function. And we can now access our database and insert records. And we know we have a valid stock request because it has a symbol of type string. And we can just use that and plug that right into the database. And it works. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and do delete from stocks. And I'm just going to remove these records just so that we can use them again. They need to be unique. So we've cleared the database out. And now we're going to focus on the main feature of our application, which is the part that actually fetches the key statistics from Yahoo Finance. Now, you notice our endpoint worked instantly. And after we post to our create stock endpoint, we get an instant message saying a stock is created. Um, but to fetch a bunch of information from Yahoo Finance, that might take you know a few seconds or maybe 10 seconds uh, per request. And we don't want that request to hang while uh, waiting for a response. We want the user to get a success knowing, hey, I got the message. I'm going to go do this work in the background. So now we're going to use a third feature of Fast API, which is background tasks. And we'll create a background task that will fetch information from Yahoo Finance and have that run. And meanwhile, we'll, we're going to give the user an instant response saying, we got the message. Uh, we're processing it. So let's go ahead and show how to define a background task. So as another parameter for our function, we're going to define a background task. So to define a background task and use it, I actually need to import this feature as well from FastAPI. So I'm going to do background tasks. And so I'm importing background tasks from FastAPI. And then I can use it in my function signature. And now the depends has to come at the end. So I'm going to put the parameter before the depends. So I'm going to do background underscore tasks. And that's going to be of type background tasks. And so that's the second parameter here. And then now that we have that, we can add functions to this background, this list of background tasks, um, and then those will execute. So let me show you how to do that. So how do we use the background task? And when do we want to actually kick off this background task? Well, I'm going to kick off the background task after we add the database record, and then also let the code continue on and return a response to the user. So after we add this database record, I'm going to give my background task a reference to the primary key of the stock record. That way, it can update that record in the database after it's complete, even if it finishes much later. So I'm going to do background underscore tasks dot add task. So uh, this method add task lets us add a new task to our queue here. And then I'm going to make a function called fetch stock data. So this will be a regular 
a function. So I'm going to call it fetch stock data, right? And I'm going to have it accept an ID, and that's of type integer. And so this integer is just going to be a reference to the primary key in the database. And then our logic here can fetch information from Yahoo Finance, and then it'll have this reference to the ID. And then later it can use the database session uh, to update the database um, with the updated key statistics. And so our background task is going to add the task uh, fetch stock data. And then it's going to pass it a parameter of stock.id. And that ID came from the just inserted uh, stock record. So uh, SQL Alchemy inserts this record. And then now this object is populated with the primary key ID of the stock record. And so we're calling fetch stock data and it's getting this ID as a parameter. All right, so now that we have our background task defined and configured, we're adding a task that calls this function and it accepts the primary key ID of the stock record. Let's actually fill in the contents of this function and have it do some work for us. So what I'm going to do is create a new session in the background. So I'm going to do db, oops, db equals session local. So we're creating a database session in this background task. And we're also going to say, uh, we're also going to query the database now. So we're going to find the stock record using this ID. And so in SQL Alchemy, the way that works, you do db.query and you give it the name of the model. So I'm going to do the stock model and we're going to filter the table and find where stock.id equals equals ID. And that will be the first record. So we only expect one record there. All right. And then um, we can actually update that record. So uh, let's let's test that this function even works before fetching information from Yahoo Finance. I'm going to do uh, stock dot uh, forward PE equals 10. And then I'm going to do add that to the session. So I'm going to add our new stock record and then I'm going to commit. And so we're going to see if we can after we're going to try to hit this post endpoint. We're going to try to find the stock that it just created. And then we're going to set it forward PE to 10 manually and then add it to the session and commit it to the database. So let's see if that works. I think that's all we need. So I'm going to hit this again and I'm going to do another stock symbol. Let's call it uh, Procter and Gamble. Okay, I press that. It says stock created. Now let's check our database. Select star from stocks. All right, and you see we have PG here. So you see we haven't executed um, that function yet. So I think I forgot one thing. Um, now that we're using this asynchronous background task, I need to put async in front here. And so let me try that with a different stock. All right. So now you see in order to use any of this async functionality, we need to actually put this async keyword in front of this endpoint. And so we need to do that if we're doing something like background tasks and for that background task to execute. All right, so now that we have a working background task that's setting this forward PE equal to 10, let's actually have it set real data that comes from Yahoo Finance. So to do that, I'm gonna import the Yahoo Finance package. So I'm gonna do import Y Finance. And you should already have this in your requirements text. So you should already have this package installed. So make sure you have Y Finance installed. Um, and so we're going to use Y Finance real quick. So um, the documentation is online. I've used it in a lot of other videos. So let's do Y Finance uh, package here. And you'll see it has a ticker object. So I'm going to click that and ticker. And so you can see you get import Y Finance as YF and then you can get a ticker and print it out. So I'm going to show how this looks with their simple command line script just so we can see all the attributes available. So I'm going to make a little uh, test script, test yfinance.py, and let's paste this in. Um, so we have the ticker object, and then let's print microsoft.info, and you'll see all the attributes we have. All right, so I'm going to do Python 3, and I'll do a test yfinance. And you can see it's going to create this object and it's going to populate with all the values. So you see we get this a giant dictionary here. It says like a description of Microsoft and a bunch of key statistics. So you see we get like the book value, report, expense ratio, all kinds of stuff like that. And so we're going to just pick a few of these. So I've already done this in advance. You can look at the um, GitHub repository for this project. So at Finance Hacks and then at Stock Screener. And let's just take this because um, I don't remember all the exact keys we're going to be using. So I'll go to main.py here and you'll see we have this uh, fetch stock data function that uses uh, Yahoo Finance. 
So I'm going to take this part and just copy it in and talk about it. So we have command line script. In case you want to use additional statistics, um, you can add those uh, attributes or columns to your SQL Alchemy model and add those to your database and then map them to other statistics here in case you want to use like the 52 week, week high or um, book value and things like that. So that's our test Y finance script and I'm going to delete that. Um, you can just copy it from the documentation if you need that. All right, so that's good. And I'm going back to main.py. We have our fetch stock data. It finds the stock record and then I'm going to delete this forward P equals 10. And instead, I'm going to do a Yahoo data equals yfinance.ticker. And we know the stock symbol because we looked it up in the database. So we do stock.symbol. And then we're going to set all the attributes in our model equal to uh, the data that comes back from Yahoo Finance. So I've already gotten the attributes. So you see that I have 200 day moving average, 50 day moving average, uh, previous close, forward PE, forward EPS, and dividend yield. Um, so I got those from Yahoo Finance. And the dividend yield, they give it as like a 0 0.02, for instance. So just to say, have it say 2%, I'm multiplying times 100. All right, so let's see if we can make this work and run as a background task. So I'm going to run it. Um, let's start our web server back up. So I'll do dot slash run, which I'll run, which will run our web server. All right, so we can run our web server, start this back up, and let's see if we can successfully uh, retrieve real data from Yahoo Finance. So I'm gonna do a ticker like Amazon here, add that, um, and you'll see it does run in the background. It looks like I got an error, dividend yield times 100. Uh, and that's because Amazon doesn't actually pay a dividend, even though they make a ton of money. So uh, we're multiplying times 100. So we're multiplying none times 100. So uh, let's see if we can do, um, if uh, we can do a one-liner or we can do just, uh, let's see, if um, Yahoo info dot dividend yield is not none, then we can do stock dividend yield equals dividend yield times 100. And then I'm gonna clear the database out real quick. And then we'll run this again for Amazon to make sure we fix that bug. So I hit post, and then now let's do select star from stocks. And you'll see we have an Amazon record and it has a bunch of data here, like a PE, forward PE, that sort of thing. And then we can also, let's do one that has a dividend like Procter & Gamble, add that, select star from stocks. And you see we have Procter & Gamble and it has all the numbers filled in and that, that looks pretty good. So yeah, that's it for this video. We were able to create a working post endpoint to create a stock and store it in the database. And we were able to demonstrate a few of the powerful features of Fast API. We use an asynchronous function in order to execute a background task and populate a database using Yahoo Finance data. We were able to use Pedantic in order to define our request model and perform auto validation. And we were also able to use dependency injection in order to make sure we have a database connection before continuing to execute the logic of our function. So um, that's it for now. Stay tuned for the next video and we'll finish this off by, uh, fin by uh, wiring up the UI for our dashboard so that we can filter using a form inputs and we'll also create a modal dialog to allow the user to enter uh, stock symbols and add them to the database by hitting this endpoint rather than us using Insomnia to make these requests manually. So stay tuned for the next video and thank you for watching.